Good morning and welcome to another episode from the road. Today we're on our way to the airport to hop a plane to the Big Apple for the 2018 New York International Auto Show. Now technically the New York show is the end of the auto show season, but automakers aren't running out of steam, far from it. We're expecting some big unveilings, including a new Cadillac CT6 V-Sport, complete with a twin turbocharged V8, a new Audi Sport model, and an all-new Subaru Forester. There's also going to be the return of the Lincoln Aviator, Honda Insight, and Toyota Corolla Hatchback. So sit back, relax, and enjoy all the highlights from the New York Auto Show. See you in New York. We've made it to the Big Apple for the 2018 New York International Auto Show. Now there's a lot of cool stuff going on just behind me, so let's head on in and check it out. This beauty behind me is the new Lincoln Aviator Concept. It's a smaller SUV to slot below the Navigator, but still got three rows of seating. This rides on an all new platform that's rear wheel drive. Lincoln hasn't detailed too much about the powertrain, but they say it's a turbocharged engine and it could be paired with a hybrid drivetrain. Now, in addition to just looking good, the interior is really nice. It's nice leather everywhere. It's got kind of knurled metal accents. If this is the future of Lincoln, they're going in the right direction. Nissan's big news for the 2018 New York International Auto Show is this, the all-new 2019 Nissan Altima. Now, it's been completely restyled for the new model year, and it takes a lot of styling cues from the larger Maxima, including this floating C-pillar here. I wonder who is going to come standard with a naturally aspirated four-cylinder, but a variable compression turbo engine, the same one that debuted in the Infiniti QX50 small crossover, is going to be available as an, as an upgrade on this. All-wheel drive is also going to be available for the first time, but unfortunately, that'll be paired exclusively to the naturally aspirated engine. Now, inside it gets a lot new tech, with a touchscreen infotainment system, and it also comes with Nissan's ProPilot Assist semi-autonomous driving systems that include adaptive cruise control and blind spot monitoring. Expect this to go on sale by the end of the year. VW's gone a little Atlas crazy at the New York Auto Show with two concepts based on the family hauler. The first is this one behind me. It's the Atlas Cross Sport Concept. It's essentially a two-row version of the three-row Atlas. It's seven and a half inches shorter than the normal Atlas, but it rides on the same wheelbase. Production hasn't been announced for this, but we expect to see it in the next year or two. VW's second Atlas-based concept is this, the Atlas 10 Oak pickup truck. Now this is basically just a German Ridgeline. It's based on the Atlas chassis and it's got the Atlas's V6 under hood, four-wheel drive, and a unibody construction. Now VW hasn't said if they're going to put this into production, but VW fans have been clamoring for a VW pickup for quite some time, so we expect this to probably make production within the next few years. Cadillac's the latest automaker to get out on the compact crossover cruise with this, the all-new X-T4. You can think of this as a smaller X-T5. All X-T4 models are going to be powered by a 2-liter turbocharged engine made into a 9-speed automatic transmission. Total output stands at 237 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. The X-T4 is front-wheel drive base, but all-wheel drive will be available. Pricing for this is going to be just under $36,000. The XT4 is not the only new Cadillac here in New York. Cadillac also unveiled this, the all-new CT6 V-Sport. Now, what's important about this model is what's under the hood. It's a 4.2-liter twin-turbocharged V8 that's going to be specific to the Cadillac brand. It's got an estimated 550 horsepower and 627 pound-feet of torque. That power goes to all four wheels via a 10-speed automatic transmission. Subaru used the New York Auto Show to unveil its all-new 2019 Forester. Now, the Forester is Subaru's best-selling SUV model, so they didn't really want to mess with a good thing. The styling's new, but it doesn't look all that different from last year's model. Now, this one is a little bit bigger, so interior volume is also up. The only engine available is going to be a 2.5-liter four-cylinder boxer engine. Unfortunately, the turbocharged XT Forester is dead, and Subaru says it's not coming back. Now, you'll be able to get the Forester in a few different trim levels. Um, this white one behind me is the new Sport trim, and you can identify it with its orange markings on the roof and on the side sills. And the inside's got orange, too, and it's also got this crazy kind of fabric seat that's um, supposed to be water-resistant. The green one over here is the Touring model. It's kind of the luxury version. It's got some chrome accents on the outside and a leather interior. We don't have pricing information on the new Forester, but we expect this to go on sale by the end of the year. Porsche isn't unveiling a new model here in New York, but rather a way to spend more money on a 911. This vehicle behind me is the 911 GT3 RS, which debuted in Geneva earlier this year. However, this car now has the Wysoch package, which is $18,000 on top of the base GT3 RS. Now, for that extra money, you get a lot more carbon fiber and a lighter overall car. You can also update this with lightweight wheels that tack on another $13,000 to the price. So start saving your pennies if you want this. Lexus has shrunken down its funky styling for this, the all-new UX Compact Crossover. Now, this is the kind of small luxury SUV that's going to compete against vehicles like the Audi Q3 and the new Cadillac X-T4. 
Now under the hood of the UX200 is a two liter naturally aspirated four solar engine that has 168 horsepower. There's also gonna be a hybrid model called the UX250H that's gonna have 176 horsepower. Lexus says this is gonna be available via a subscription service. Now Lexus hasn't detailed too much about it, but we expect to hear more about that closer to the vehicle's market launch. Acura traveled to the Big Apple to unveil this, the all-new 2019 RDX. Now, in a nod to the original, this uses a turbocharged four-cylinder instead of a naturally aspirated V6. It uses a 10-speed automatic transmission, too. Now, on the inside, there's been some big changes. Acura's ditched its dual-screen setup for a new trackpad and single-screen setup that's going to trickle down to other Acura models in the coming years. BMW is not debuting anything here in New York, but I had to stop by the booth because look at these colors. They're very un-German. We've got this bright yellow and orange and green. Oh my, there's even a bright red. The hatch is back and here it is, the all-new Toyota Corolla hatchback. This is going to replace the Corolla IM hatchback in Toyota's lineup and it's going to land this summer. Now Toyota says this is longer, wider, and lower than the current IM and it's also up to 63 that's stiffer so it should be a lot more fun to drive. The base engine is a two-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder. Toyota hasn't released horsepower but that should be coming soon. You can get this with a six-speed manual or a CVT. And we've got a first drive coming up with this soon so stay tuned for that. This is the all-new 2019 Toyota RAV4. I must say, it looks pretty good. This here is the Adventure model. It looks a little tougher. It gets these kind of fender flare things and yeah, fog light surrounds and a different grille. But it looks pretty good. It kind of looks like a mini 4Runner. Now, this is going to get a 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine made it to an 8-speed automatic. It's also going to be a hybrid model that uses a 2.5 and it's mounted to a CVT. Now, on the top-end gas models, the Limited and this uh, Adventure model here, you can get a torque vectoring all-wheel drive system that can send up to 50% of its power to the rear wheels and also shift between the left and right side to help with cornering. On the inside, there's a lot more tech, including a 7-inch touchscreen display, and it's got Toyota Safety Suite that includes adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, all that kind of stuff. We don't have pricing information, but this is going to go on sale during the fall of 2018. The Insight nameplate's been retired for a few years, but now it's back, and here it is, the all-new Honda Insight. Now, as always, this is a dedicated hybrid model. It rides on a modified version of the chassis that underpins the new Honda Civic. Now, Honda's done away with the Civic Hybrid, and it views this as kind of the replacement for that, but it's a more upscale kind of version of that. Honda views the Civic as a youthful car, and this is more the car you get after your first promotion. Now, under hood, we have a 1.5 liter gas engine that's paired to an electric motor that generates 155 horsepower and 197 pound-feet of torque. Now, that's more powerful than the Toyota Prius, so this should be a little bit zippier. But despite having more power, it's still pretty efficient. It gets 55 miles per gallon in the city and 52 in mixed driving. Now inside you get a touchscreen infotainment system and this touring model has got nicety like stitched leather and soft touch materials. The inside also gets standard safety features like adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning. We don't have pricing information yet, but this is going to go on sale this summer, so we should have that information soon. This cage Jaguar behind me is the all-new F-Pace SVR. Now the big news here is a 5 liter supercharged V8 with 550 horsepower that can scoot this thing from 0 to 60 in just 4.1 seconds. It can also hit a top speed in excess of 170 miles an hour. Now Jaguar has also tuned the suspension to be sportier and it's got a new exhaust that's lighter and sounds better. The pricing for this is going to be $80,000 and it's going to go on sale about mid-year. The original Kia K900 wasn't exactly a hot seller, but I guess it did enough to warrant a second generation, and here it is, the 2019 Kia K900. Now changes for this model include a new 3.3 liter turbocharged V6 and a pair of 12.3 inch screens on the inside. I wasn't able to film the new Genesis Essentia concept, but here it is in all its stock photo glory. Genesis says the Essentia is a futuristic take on the grand touring car. It's made out of carbon fiber and powered by electricity. It even has a facial recognition system for opening and closing the doors. Genesis doesn't plan on putting the Essentia into regular production, but look for its styling to influence future models. So here we have it, that beautiful green machine behind me is the all new Audi RS5 Sportback. Now it's a high performance version of the regular Sport Pack, and that means it's got a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged V6 up front with 444 horsepower and 443 pound feet of torque. And it's an Audi, so it sends that power to all four wheels. And Audi says this will get from zero to 60 in under four seconds. Now you can kind of think of this as the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe that BMW's never made. We don't have any pricing information, but Audi says this will be on sale by the end of the year. So there you have it, all the latest and greatest new cars from the 2018 New York International Auto Show. Now if you want to catch up or just want more information on a specific vehicle, be sure to click the link below which has details on all the new vehicles that debuted here, including pretty live pictures. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. This UX200 model is it? Thanks guys. Fear is gone, unfortunately. Don't worry, guy. National Auto Show. It's amazing. That's amazing. People are amazing.